Welcome to Backstage with Becca B with special guest Aaron Mackey. Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Backstage with Becca B. On this episode, she's played Glinda and Wicked in Chicago, Los Angeles, on the national tour, and on Broadway. She's also starred in shows such as Sondheim on Sondheim, Anything Goes, Amazing Grace, Chaplin, and In Transit. Plus, did you know she was Lindsay Lohan's double in The Parent Trap? Please welcome Erin Mackey. I'm glad you could join me on this today. Yeah, totally. So this is a, a YouTube series you've been making? Yeah, it's like a YouTube inter theater interview series I've been making because I wanted to like uh, talk with theater actors and actresses about theater during this time. Since we can't go see a show, I wanted to like keep the conversation of theater. Totally, kind of totally, yeah. And I get that. Play my part as a fan of theater. Yeah, absolutely. Bringing content to people. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to be nice to talk about theater. Yes. <laughs> I'm excited and I have more questions that like some more questions that don't involve theater because you've done a lot of entertainment so yeah totally totally but anyways I'll get right into some questions about entertainment industry yeah. uh, so have you always known that you wanted to perform and be an actress I no, yeah, I decided at a very young age. I did, yes. I grew up in a community. I, I grew up in um, Orange County, California, a town called Fullerton. And um, my my whole community really just embraced the arts in a lot of ways. And, and just the people that my parents associated with and the schools I went to, they just all really encouraged the arts and so starting from like kindergarten I was doing musicals at school and um, there was a children's theater in my community so I did I decided pretty early on and I had a lot of interest in music and acting and all of that so I think like probably when I was like eight I did Mary <laughs> Poppins in third grade and I wanted to play Jane Banks really badly and and I got to I got to play Jane and it was like oh wow this is like this is like what I want to do I want to like play characters and tell yeah. stories so yeah and then I started working when I was about 11 I started working in um more professional the more professional world I started auditioning for uh, film and tv and so yeah I started pretty early and I've done this for almost all of my life yeah I was gonna say because I was looking up your bio on like multiple sites and you've been doing this performing <laughs> acting everything entertainment for a while yes, and yes I, I have I read that uh you actually your first audition came from like being in a theater show in Fullerton? Yeah, yeah, I was in um, Fullerton Children's Repertory Theater um, and it was a children's theater in my community and um, one of the kids in the theater, in the, th in the children's theater had a manager and up in LA and so um, that man came to see the show and we were doing Brigadoon and I was playing a milkmaid and um, yeah, he just, he approached my mom and I after the show and asked if I wanted to start uh, auditioning for film and TV up in LA and um, hooked me up with an agent. And then my like very first audition was for The Parent Trap. And so, and I, and I got, you know, I played Lindsay Lohan's double in that. And so that was like my first audition. I'd never done anything like it. Um, and all of a sudden it was like, at least it seems really fast to me. It's, yeah. it's been a while now, but it's, I'm pretty sure it was like within two weeks, my mom and my sister and I were like going to London and starting work on a movie. So we were yeah. just thrown into it. Yep. I truly was. Yeah. I was just like learning as I went. Yeah. Cause you, cause you had done theater up to that point, And I'm sure that film and TV for, for a child, especially is like a whole different thing to get into. Yeah, it's a, it is. It's a whole different medium. And so it requires, I mean, it's all fundamentally the same, you know, but um, it does require some, some different things. And especially the job I was doing was a very special kind of job too. It was, a, um, it was very technical in a lot of ways. So I was learning all of that. Everyone was very, I don't, I don't think anyone on set fully, you know, expected me to know 
all of these things they were doing because it was pretty new technology anyways at the time. So, um, you know, everyone was very patient with me as I learned and um, yeah, but it was, it was the best education you could get, I think, on making a movie yeah. and what goes into it and how hard it is and the time it takes and just the care in every moment of making a movie. What was it like being a double for the movie, like for Lindsay in the movie? Yeah, I, it was a, it was a really unique experience. It's, it's, uh, it's a very humbling job because your work is intended to not be seen. That's the whole point. You know, we want to believe that there are two twins that are the, they look exactly alike. So you don't want to know that I'm there. That's the whole point. Um, so, you know, it was in a, in a lot of ways for my first job, it was less pressure, which was good. You know, like I didn't have the, I didn't have the responsibility Lindsay did of carrying this movie. You know, she was, she had so much responsibility, but I, you know, but then on the flip side, it was like, I was gone for six months. I missed half of a year of my sixth grade um, school. And so, you know, I came back and everyone was like, what did you do? What did you do? And then they came to see the movie. And it's a very, it's a very specific kind of thing you have to um, explain to people. And so, um, so that was interesting too. So there was, you know, there was kind of, um, there's a lot of excitement with it. And then I also, you know, learned that the movie is a whole team. I mean, it's it's hundreds and hundreds of people putting this movie together. You know, you see these handful of people in the in the movie, but there's just tons of people um, working behind the scenes to make it all happen. It is still a popular movie to this day. So, I mean, what's a fun fact about being a double that like most people wouldn't know? You think? Hmm. Well, I think par I, I think something, I, I don't know if this is a universal thing, but at least from my experience was, I very much felt like I was um, part of the cast. You know, I was not made to feel like I was not an actor. Yeah. Um, people, people let me act. They let me um, have my kind of, within the, the bounds of what Lindsay and everybody else needed, you know, be able to be me. And, um, and it was very much a family on set and I never felt like I was, you know, not a vital part of, of the cast. And I think a lot of times people don't understand that, like when, it, when it's that kind of work, it can seem like, oh, you're sort of separate or it's this, it's a separate really technical thing and you don't need to have I don't, I don't know. I don't know what people think totally. But for me, I, I just really felt like I was made to feel a part of not only the whole crew, but the cast. Yeah. I mean, and essentially you were helping because like Lindsay was your age. So essentially you were helping her be able to play off someone. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, Nancy, actually, the director, she gave me the, the credit of the acting double, which was very nice. But, you know, to just emphasize the fact that this was about having a scene partner. Yeah. Um, so that was really, that was really special. I didn't know that was going to be my credit. And so when it popped up, I also didn't know. I'm listed number 10 in the principal cast, which I, I didn't know. And I wasn't, uh, that wasn't like, something I think that was in my contract. It was just, it was something that Nancy did and was very kind to include me in that, in that group. Well, it's very well deserved, I think. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I, I think you deserve to get the recognition, for sure. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and then also before I get into theater and your, your experience uh, getting cast in Wicked pretty much like right after, or right after you got accepted into college. Um, yeah. I have to, you were in Mary Kate and Ashley's video, which, yeah. oh my gosh, that was part of my childhood. I wanted to be After invited. party? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know when I figured that out, but I think I figured that out in the past, like, six months or so. That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> and I wanted to be invited to one of those. Well, <laughs> like, filming that. I mean, didn't we all? I did, too. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean... It was basically like a children's show and in, in music videos intertwined. So like Yeah, it was like a half hour video made for made for a video. Was it like a party on set kind of? Or was it It a was fun. Yeah, okay. it was fun. we had to um 
we had to go in before we started shooting and learn choreography and like so there was a couple of days we had just like in a dance studio learning everything and um me and the other girl who was playing one of their friends i her name was joanne joanna um we uh we didn't sing so we weren't responsible for any of the recording stuff we we're kind of like lip singing in the video but we're not singing um and but we did have to learn all the choreography and so yeah we did that and then i mean you know the the video is supposed to be fun so the the vibe yeah. on set was like this should be kids having fun you know did, had you watched any of their videos before then? I think I had, yeah. I knew, I had an idea of, of what they were like. Um, <laughs> but this one was fun too, because it was the fashion party. So we got to wear like cool clothes and change clothes a lot. <laughs> I just had to bring that up because like, God knows how many times I annoyed my parents singing all the songs from the You're Invited videos. As oh, a, that's so funny. I, my, my parents probably still know all the choreography and all the songs. Yeah. From those. So, uh, then you, uh, after you graduated high school, jumping ahead, you went to Carnegie Mellon. Yeah. And then you got cast in Wicked, like, after your freshman year in the show? I did. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What was, what was that like getting cast, like, while you were a freshman in college or while you, transitioning it was, it was super exciting it was crazy it was really fast um like I said I started working you know when I was 11 so I had you know been um auditioning for not only film and tv but I grew up near LA so there was less theater but I was also auditioning for theater as I was growing up too um and so I had gotten to know the casting director for Wicked Telsey um and I had gotten to know them actually, I think it was just the summer before, because I was up for um, the Hairspray National Tour. And so I, I kind of knew the casting office a little bit from that. Um, and yeah, I, but you know, I like so many kids, I, you know, applied to all the theater schools and I decided to go to Carnegie Mellon and um, I went there for a year. And then on my summer break, it was, an audition that popped up for me through, I still had uh, managers and agents at that point. And um, yeah, so I went to the audition. I was actually doing another show. I was doing like a, a local civic live opera production of Babes in Arms. And I couldn't go to my appointment because we were in tech. So I um, went to, they had an open call for the beginning of the day. And then my, my appointment was supposed to be later. So I went to the open call and tried to explain that I had an audition later, but nobody really knew what I was talking about. So I just hung out there. You know, I had, I think I had rehearsal, I had tech that night. So um, I stayed, I was non-equity, so I couldn't, I was like just waiting. Um, I hadn't joined the union. And so I, I just waited and waited and waited. And finally they got to the point where they were seeing non-equity people and they let me <laughs> go in. And then I explained to Craig Burns, who it works at Telsey and Company still, so, um, I was like, and he was like, hey, what are you doing here? You have an appointment later. And I was like, I know, I just, I have this other thing and I can't do it. So I just came and waited here. And so he was very kind. He gave me my whole audition right then. Um, and then I had a call back, I think like the next day. Um, and then I did that. And I want to say like a couple days later, I May, I don't know. I honestly, the timeline is fuzzy, but it was very quickly after that I found out that I had booked a job on the national tour, the first national tour, the only national tour at the time of Wicked. Yeah. Um, and I booked a job as a swing on, in the national tour. So I started as a swing um, and I think I found out and within that week I, I left to go up to San Francisco and join them. Wow, that that's so quick. And it's like... <laughs> I mean, I feel like when you go to college for musical theater, you like expect to be there for the four years. So it's like, yeah. did you ever expect to be going on a national tour after your first year of college? No, no, I did not. I definitely did not expect that. I mean, like I said, I had been working some, so, so entering the professional world of, you know, acting was not um, brand new to me. That was at least somewhat known, but 
the professional world of theater and like large scale Broadway shows, that was totally new to me. I had never done eight shows a week. I had never, I had no idea how things worked backstage. I had no idea how touring worked. Um, so again, it was sort of a learn on your feet situation. Yeah. Um, and they, you know, Wicked was very patient and very kind with me and, and trusted me a lot. And I, yeah, I really learned like, again, I feel like I kind of learned everything you sort of need to know within like that first experience. <laughs> I was going to say it was probably like a master class of its own. It was probably like a, oh, well, this is like a college class of itself being in the show. Oh, yeah. And I mean, to a certain extent, stuff that you could never learn in college. I mean, you know, you can't, uh, they don't have swings in college. Yeah. You know, no one, that is such a specialty kind of job too. I didn't know what a swing was. I found out I had been hired as a swing and I was like, yay. And then I was like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> um, and of course I learned and it's, it's pretty much one of the hardest jobs you can have. Um, I loved it. Some people really, their brains just, it stresses them out so much to be a swing, which I totally get. I knew, I think I knew seven of the eight, um, girl tracks in Wicked and the, the Wicked wow. Ensemble. And, but for me, it was actually kind of fun. I was also like, I was 19, I was just a sponge. I was picking it all up and I just was like, yeah, give it to me, give it to me. What else, what else? <laughs> Did you know at the time, since Wicked was fairly still new at the time, it was like, what, tw 2006? Two this was 2005. 2005, mm -hmm. okay. I was gonna say you got cast in, as Glinda in 2006. Yes. Right? Okay. So this was 2005, so it was like two years after yeah. the show came about. Did you yeah. know like how big a deal it was becoming? I mean, I had seen Wicked. I went to New York um, when I was auditioning for schools. I, I had a callback for Juilliard and I went to New York with my mom and my sister and one of the shows we saw was Wicked because I we had heard about it from my voice teacher and he was like, you gotta see this new show called Lincoln. So we went and saw it. I thought it was amazing, obviously. And um, yeah, so I did know the show and I had the cast album, listened to it like crazy, um, knew it backwards and forwards. But I do think the whole, I do think the like sort of epic phenomenon of Wicked really did, um, start exploding in a way with the tour, I think, because that just brought it and made it accessible to the rest of the country, people who couldn't get to New York. So, and it is such a special show and it resonates with so many people. So I think that, I do think, I didn't know what a huge thing it was. And this, the first national tour, especially, I mean, I was part of the, not, there was, um, the original company started like earlier that year. And then I was brought on about six months in, um, when they realized they needed another uh, female swing. So it was about six months in, but I mean, that tour was like, you were rock stars. You went to every city and it was just like, oh my gosh, Wicked's here. And it was, you know, there were parties, at these huge opening night parties for the tour. And um, just like, it was just a, it was like you were a rock star coming to these cities. You could just tell restaurants that you were in the Wicked tour and it was like, you got a table and you got, you know, free dessert and stuff. So it was, it, it was really, it was very exciting to be part of a show that was like that big of a deal for people. Yeah. I mean, where you got free dessert, like, <laughs> that, like that, that's, what, that's, that's what I picked up. <laughs> it was what like, else did you ask for, really? Yeah. You, you can beat the free dessert. <laughs> Totally. <laughs> and then, I mean, Wicked obviously loved you because you were part of the show till around 2009, 2010-ish. 2009. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, 2010. I think I finished, like, the first week of 2010. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you got cast as Glinda in 2006. Yes. And, I mean, that's a huge deal. Was it, how long ha was it in Chicago before you got cast as Glinda there? Or... How did I think it had been in Chicago. Oh gosh, I'm probably gonna get this wrong, but I think I think it had started like late 2005, early 2006, maybe. And I joined initially in Chicago in the ensemble. I was the um, the Fanny track, um, like one of Glinda's friends. Yeah. So I did that, and and I understudied Glinda for about six months before I took over. So. Um, 
No, it must have been there longer. It, it must have started 2005, like beginning of 2005, because there was, Kate Reinders started the company, then Stacey Morgan Lewis took over for her, and that's when I took over. I took over for Stacey. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> I have no idea when it started. <laughs> but you also got to learn understudying on top of being a swing. So you got to- Yeah, so, I mean, when you said, like, I learned, like, every aspect uh, I, I mean not every single aspect obviously but i feel like i got some major i got a major education on what swings do what it means to be an understudy what it means to be in the ensemble what it means to you know just do all these different roles within and i i think that's really helpful i mean you know i think there is a sense of collaboration and camaraderie with with casts regardless you know whether you're the lead or whatever you're doing, you know, that you are a team making the story together, but it, it's really nice to have the information from like a very personal, I've stood in those shoes, I've done that job, and I can really, I know what it, what goes into it. Yeah. What was your reaction when you heard that you were going to be the lead, Glinda? Oh my gosh, I was like beside myself. I couldn't believe it. Like, I was 20. I was like, a year into working for the company, um, Glinda was like a dream, dream role for me. I, you know, like I said, I saw it in New York and I saw Kristen Chenoweth and I was like, oh, I want to play that part. And I listened to the album and I sang it all. And, you know, I like, it was one of my, you know, top dream roles. And so I just couldn't believe that I, funny, I was getting to do it like on this huge stage. Like it, it was so exciting. And you essentially got to stay for a residency in Chicago, which is- Yeah, I was there for a, a year and a half playing Glinda, two years altogether. So it's like, I mean, tour, you're not staying put, you're traveling to and from places. And I mean, it's, it was probably nice to stay put and like- Oh, yeah. City. Yeah, yeah. Touring, touring's hard in that way. You know, I mean, you just, you're just constantly moving. You're just sort of in this different mindset and you don't- you don't have roots, you know, and, and that's exciting, but it's also challenging in a lot of ways. Um, and you're constantly adapting and it was great. I mean, Chicago was my home for two years. I, I love Chicago. It's a great city and it's a great theater city. So I really got to know this big city. And it, I, I think living in Chicago before living in New York too, was a great sort of stepping stone because, you know, I, when I started the Wicked Tour, I mean, I, I my home address was my parents. You know, I didn't, I hadn't moved really out from home. I'd gone to college for a year, but I didn't have an apartment. I didn't have, you know, any any roots anywhere besides my my childhood home. So, yeah, it was it was a very good like step in terms of <laughs> growing yeah. up too. <laughs> and then before you went to Broadway, you went back to to California and you performed in LA for a while in Wicked, yes. which like, wow, they kept, they really kept you on board until they could get you on Broadway. <laughs> That's what I'm noticing here. <laughs> they did, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. But it, you know, it was like every step you, you learn something new and it's, um, yeah, it's a really cool job to be, you know, to be given and to be uh, trusted with. So yeah, so I went to LA for about six months. Um, and then I had almost a year before I went back to the show. Um, I had met my husband at that point. We got married, we moved to New York. So I had kind of a lot of things that happened in that year. Um, and then after we moved to New York, we had been there, uh, I don't know, maybe like three or four months. And, and then I, I started, and I did it in New York. And, and they were like, we need Aaron in New York. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it had been, it had been talked about over the years, so it wasn't like completely out of the blue, you know, it was very exciting, obviously, that it had really happened, and everything had come together, that it was going to work for me to be able to do it there. Um, but yeah, I mean, there had been like, you know, little murmurs, or whatever, <laughs> throughout, <laughs> or mumblings. Um, yeah, so that was amazing. I got to, you know, make my Broadway debut in this amazing part, in this huge show. Still yeah. super young and still learning. And, you know, like, it was, it was really, really cool. Do you remember the day you made your Broadway debut? 
Oh no. Uh uh. August? August? I think I meant August. August? August 2009, I think. August two thousand August two thousand nine. I don't know the day. <laughs> I don't remember. I'm not very good with that stuff. <laughs> Same. Do you do you remember the experience like leading up to it and like Oh um, yeah. Yeah. I mean it was I had my my parents and my sister fly out and my husband was there and my I had signed with a new agent in New York and he came and saw the show. Um yeah, the first night was super super exciting just you know everyone being very kind and giving me nice letters and flowers and making me feel very very special what's the difference between performing on broadway and performing in a national tour of the show well you know they're they're very similar in in a lot of ways i mean the you know the point of a national tour is that everyone is getting the experience of being in of new york um i think there's there's something exciting about being in New York City in a Broadway theater. These Broadway theaters have a lot of history. They're, I mean, so do the touring houses a lot, but you know, these have like a lot of Broadway history in them. And so you're seeing, you know, you see people who've signed the drawer in the dressing room from, you know, decades before. Um, there's fun traditions like that. Uh, yeah, and it's exciting to, you know, step out of like a stage door in New York too and realize you're in the midst of everything that all the theaters that you've grown up yeah. wanting to go see shows and be in shows. And so, yeah, it's definitely, there's a, there's a special energy for sure about performing in, on New York stages and on Broadway stages. I mean, you step out and there's like a bunch of lights everywhere, theater lights, it's like- Oh yeah, yeah, you know, there's parties down the street, there's all this, just, there's a lot of history and, and you know, New York celebrates the Broadway history there. And so that, and it's, you know, it's still there and it's been there for a long time. And so you feel like you're part of the, the long tradition of shows that, you know, the, the yeah. many, many decades that it's been around. And then, I have a question from, wait, let's see if I can find it, from Alex Hora. She asked, uh, I'm going to change it up a little bit because she asked, who's your favorite elf bow to work with, which I'm sure is a hard question because you've worked with a lot. That's a very hard question, yes. So what do you think makes the elf bows you worked with, like each of them special in their own way? Oh, I'm, I mean, that's, it's a great role for one. So you know, the women I've worked with, I feel like all of them have really felt personally attached to that character, which is really cool. You know, they like understand her on a very deep kind of personal level as well. Um, I have loved everybody that I've gotten to play opposite. I've been so, so happy with the the women that I've gotten to to play opposite because I mean that character is so important to your show it's just you know it's the two of you together uh, for so much of that show and so you really just have to have so much trust um so yeah and I think it's you know I've also worked every actress I've worked with has been such a great listener and so um open and flexible you know like I I like changing things up on stage I like you know, seeing, that's theater, you know, spontaneity. Like you want within within the realm of the story, obviously, and you don't go too crazy, but that you're listening and you're reacting in your honest way that night um, with what you've been given and what your, the situation is around you. And so I've loved that every actress I've worked with has has liked that, has wanted to do that as well, but did not feel stressed out by that. Um, so, that's really, really fun. I don't know if I answered the question, but. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I feel like totally like it, like in a way like that, that totally makes sense because I mean, theater is about what makes theater special is that like, it's not the same every night. It's different every night. And yeah, people are seeing a unique experience. You know, obviously they're seeing the same story and they're seeing, they're hearing the words and they're hearing the songs, but they are seeing a unique night, you know? Yeah, and especially with a character like Glinda, it's mm -hmm. like you have so much freedom, I feel like, to kind of improv 
and uh, change things up, make her quirkier or like less quirky in certain nights, depending on like how you're feeling maybe. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I think, you know, what's what's really fun about that character is you have to bring yourself to it. You know, w Wicked does not want you to do a Kristen Chenoweth impression because that's not you. And that won't, that just won't be funny. It won't be real. It won't be, you know, for, for you, for Kristen, perfect, you know. Um, so that's a really nice thing about that character is it encourages that in people. Yeah, and the audiences who are repeat audiences since 2003 want to see something that they haven't seen before. Yeah, they totally. They want to see your your interpretation, and I think that's really nice. And and I think that goes for every character, and I think with Linda, it might just be one of the more obvious ones because there is just a lot of room to see that. Yeah, it's a fun character to get to witness on stage. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I'm gonna go out of order a little bit because you went back to Wicked last year in, mm -hmm. uh, in 2019 and went on the tour. What did you learn the first time playing Glinda that helped you out during this time playing Glinda? Um, well, definitely the, the stamina. Um, you know, I, like I said, when I joined Wicked initially, I was brand new. I had never done eight shows a week. I had obviously had 10 years less training than I do now because we all continue working. Um, so I learned a lot about how you pace yourself, how you take care of yourself, um, the, just the things that you need to do to maintain a role of that size. And that takes, it, it is a, it is a incredible role and it, but it requires a lot of you. It re requires a lot of your energy. It requires a lot of your voice, your mind. You have to be incredibly focused when you're doing it. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it just, it, it, you expend a lot of energy playing that role. So I think knowing this time around going into it, that that was going to be required of me was, was helpful in a way. I mean, it doesn't take away from how hard it can be at times, but, um, but I was more prepared for that, um, undertaking, you know? Yeah. And you mentioned bringing yourself to Glenda. So how do you think you're like Glenda? And how do you think you're different from Glenda? Uh, <laughs> I think I, I think I'm pretty different overall. Like I, I, th I don't know. I think most people probably relate a little more with Alphaba in terms of like, I think everybody feels like the outsider at times. No, but I, I don't know a lot of people that are like, I feel like everyone loves me. <laughs> you know, I think that's a very normal human thing to be like, uh, to be like, uh, just not just sure. less confident. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, so I probably, but, but at the same time, I am like, a very social person. I like hanging out with people. I don't always like being the center of attention, but I do, I do understand that part of her. And I, another thing I really like about Glinda and I, I hope I'm like too, is she's just really is like, she's herself, you yeah. know, she is like weird and does kooky things. And especially, you know, in that popular scene, you get to really just see her be like all the things that she is. And Elphaba is just like, what is this creature? Yeah. And, and it's really fun that, you know, that people that are just unapologetically themselves. And, um, and I, I like that about Glinda too. And I feel like I got to see you as Glinda last year. And I feel like you play her very like, you play her like in a really natural way, kind of. Like you bring Thank the you. quirkiness to her in a natural way, if that makes sense. Thank you, yeah. Well, I think, you know, more than anything, she's a person, you know? She's a flawed, interesting, complicated, weird person. And like, that's, I, you know, I just think that that's something that people wanna see on stage. They wanna see humans. They wanna see human beings. They wanna see people they, they can recognize their humanity. 
And then I have to ask, uh, is the, what's the funniest moment that's ever happened to you on stage during Wicked? Because last last year when I saw you in, I forgot what city, I think it was Fresno. Mm -hmm. I, there was like, after popular, you threw a wand back and like someone dove for it. Like they were playing <laughs> baseball backstage. I was sitting in the front row. So I like saw it from the you side. That. I haven't stopped thinking about it since. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not the greatest wand thrower. So that's <laughs> sort of been a, that's been a theme of my Glinda time as well. Um, I'm not the greatest. Definitely our props guy, guys were like, hey. You gotta get, you gotta get your aim. Um, oh gosh, I mean, funny things happen like every night, you know, like yeah. things, little things that people would never notice. I'm trying to remember, I know during Popular, it was always sort of a secondary goal to get Marianne to laugh, um, especially, you know, when you've done it for a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm pretty, I know that I got her a handful of times that, you know, and <laughs> it, it can be a really fun moment on stage when uh, we're just, we're all human beings and we all can, yeah. we have limits of how much we can take before we start laughing. So Marianne was like so solid most of the time. She was so hard to get. Um, I'm trying to think if, I, I can't think of anything like specific, but um yeah, like weird things happen all the time. People slipping, people, you know. Yeah. Uh, I threw, let's see, with in terms of the wands, I mean, I do remember in Chicago, I had one show where I threw the popular training wand into the audience. Oh, my God. So they had to go get it in intermission. And then during the cat fight scene, that the big wand that I twirl, yeah. I also threw that into the audience the same night. And they were like, this can't, you can't, you have to learn how to throw the wands. So I, like I said, that's kind of a theme of my, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not good. I've never played sports. <laughs> it's not my thing. They were like, Aaron, you can't give the wands to the audience members. <laughs> they're like, they're not souvenirs. <laughs> no, they're not souvenirs. Yeah. We're not passing them out to the audience members tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure the audience members were thrilled though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. As long as no one got hurt, you know. I don't. No one got hurt, so that was good. <laughs> yes, love that. So then, before I get off of Wicked and go into other shows that you've done since, what do you think makes Wicked a show that's been able to stay open since two thousand three? Yeah, I think. I mean, I was really. I hadn't seen the show, you know, in ten years when I almost ten years when I came back to it and. So I really, the, the first night I got to see it again, I was watching and I was like, wow, the show just like really still, it still resonates. It's still relevant, you know? It's, it's this story of not only like friendship and two women supporting one another and fighting with one another and, you know, like having conflict and having a real complicated friendship and relationship with one another. Um, but also this story of a woman fighting against injustice, you know, like, I, I don't, I don't think that will ever not be relevant. There's always going to be someone that is, that needs people to speak up. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think that's part of why. Um, I think it also just, is incredibly entertaining too. You know, it has all of this depth and then it's just incredible costumes and lights and songs and meaningful dialogue. And it's just, yeah, I, I mean, you, you put all that together and I just think that it really stands up throughout the years. It's really a magical show. Do you have a favorite yeah. song from the show? And do you have a favorite costume that Glenda wears in the show? Sorry, do I have a favorite song? Is that what you said? Yeah, a favorite song first. Um, well, for me to do, probably popular, just because it's so fun and it's such a great song. It's such a funny song. Um, so probably that one to do, though. One of my favorite songs from the show is probably I'm Not That Girl. I love that song. It's just such a wonderful moment for Alphaba and it's a quiet moment. Um, in this, you know, in the show that has a lot of big, huge things happening. It's just a woman standing on stage talking about how she wants 
to be loved. Um, and so it's like a really beautiful moment. Um, and then costume. Mm. I really love, I don't know if this is a boring answer, but I love Glinda's shiz uniform. I think it's so cute. Her little, yeah. her little uniform. It's adorable. The little skirt with the ruffles. Um, I love that. Also, I mean, Alphabet's act two dress that's like all intricate and gorgeous. Yeah. How, how heavy is the heaviest Glinda costume? I, pr I don't know exactly. And I think it depends on the woman because if you're smaller, the dress is smaller. Yeah. <laughs> if you're taller, the dress is bigger. I think my dresses are probably some of the heaviest because I'm on the taller side of the Glindas. And so, you know, it's more about like proportion to you, the dress. It's not like one size fits all. So, I mean, I also had an incredibly heavy dress for the first part of my contract but until they made me one because um, I, when I started, it was still being made. Um, so I was wearing a dress from England, from the London production. And uh, it's a different design. And it's it's a bit heavier, the, the, the one that I was wearing. So, I mean, that dress has got to be around 20, 25 pounds. It's, it's a workout. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, you get used to it. You really do. And they have all these things within the dress to help balance the weight, to make it not all just like sitting on your shoulders and hips and stuff. But, um, no, it's a ton of weight and you're like running around and yeah, it takes a while to get used to. I, I can imagine. It's like, here's, here's a workout on stage while you're, di while you're like yeah. moving around backstage. You get very, very strong. <laughs> and, wow. And then, uh, Besides Wicked, you've done a lot of other Broadway shows that I haven't gotten to see any of them, but I've heard wonderful things about In Transit. So you've done like uh, uh, Sondheim and Anything Goes and Chaplin and Amazing Grace and In Transit. Mm -hmm. so what out of those shows has been the most special do you think to be a part of? I know it's, they're all probably special. Yeah. That, oh my gosh. They're all special for so many different ways. I mean, it was like... Sondheim on Sondheim was my first, like, original show. Um, so that, you know, like, me and the original cast. And that was, I, th I think I finished Wicked, and I started that about a month, month and a half after I, after I had finished Wicked in New York. Um, and so that was so cool and so special, because not only was I, like, having this dream of being able to be part of an original cast. I was working with Barbara Cook and Stephen Sondheim and James Lapine and, you know, Vanessa Williams and just this incredible cast of people that I were like, it, legends. I was just surrounded by legends. And I was just like this girl who'd like just moved to New York less than a year before. Um, so that was so special. Only my first Broadway opening night, you know, all of those things. Um, my first cast album. So that one was really, really special in that way. Um, again, they all, they all are, like every yeah. single one of them um, in so many ways. In Transit has some unique things in that uh, it was really the first show that I was part of um, for years before it came to Broadway. So a lot of the, the other shows I had originated have been around for, had been around for a long time, but I hadn't, hadn't been part of that process until much closer to when they came to Broadway and um, Amazing Grace, like I did one out of town with them, but it had been around for 20 years before then. Um, so I came in relatively late to the process. Um, within Transit, it had also been around for a while. There was an off-Broadway production that I wasn't part of, um, but I joined and started doing readings of that in 2012. Um, and so I was just part of, we did readings of it for four years, five years before it came to New York. So I, you know, just got to know the show so well. I got to know that character so well. I love the writers and the whole company. And just that was special in that way that I got to be part of it for like years beforehand. Yeah. And then it's like, it made it and made it to a New York stage because that's hard to a Broadway stage. Like it's competitive to get in there. It's hard to get theaters. It's hard to, it's hard to produce Broadway shows. They're huge undertakings. So the fact that it, it, it did was like, yes, we did it. <laughs> like you get to see the show grow while you're part of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I got to see it change. I got to see all the different, you know, 
ways they changed it. And yeah, it was really, that was a cool one. Do you have a show that was most challenging besides Wicked to be a part of? Hmm. Again, all have their challenges. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, all of them do. Well, Amazing Grace was challenging in the fact that that was the first show that I originated on Broadway where I was really a lead, a, like lead lead. You know, I mean, I played principal characters in all these other Broadway shows, but I was very much the female, like, center lead character. Um, and so that was a new experience for me. You know, anything goes, I had, I had replaced, so I, ha I wasn't part of um, the whole forming of that show, but I was playing Hope, you know, where Reno's probably like the, the main, main. Um, Sondheim on Sondheim, again, like, you know, I was part of this ensemble of people. Um, and so yeah, so Amazing Grace was was challenging in that way. I mean, I had more material. I had lots of songs to sing. <laughs> I had a lot of stuff to do on stage. Um, and I had a lot of, you know, responsibility for carrying that show in, in many ways. Um, and not only for what I had to do on stage, but there is a sense, and at least in the experiences I've had, people who are really, you know, um, the lead characters of shows, they also are very much a leader of the company. It's just, you know, you have so much time on stage, you have so much responsibility on stage, your attitude and your um, work ethic, very much, you know, people take that on. Um, and I, I noticed that when I was not leading shows. And so when I took over that role, I, I realized, okay, like it's, it is part of my job to kind of keep morale up, keep people um, excited and working hard. And not that I'm like their teacher or something, but just that like, I can, I can be an example of that. And as someone who is going to be carrying a lot of responsibility for the show, I can encourage everybody else in the company to have that attitude. Um, and I knew that I could have some influence that way within my cast. So that was a new thing too, of like a new responsibility. And I, I really liked that. <laughs> Do you have a process of how you go about like originating a character and bringing like a character to life on Broadway? I mean, I don't know if I have a process, like a step-by-step -step what I do. I think, you know, I think, again, it is it is a, foundationally, it's a lot of the same stuff. You are looking at like, who is this person? Why do they do the things they do? What is their relationship to everybody else in the story? What do they want? Those are all like your foundational kind of questions of any character you're going to play. Um, and I think with an original character, what's unique is you um, you can change things or you can talk about things being changed. You know, I mean, I can't just change the words willy nilly, but when I'm originating a show, the writer is there and I can say, why am I saying this? What is this? Where is this coming from? Or, you know, what, what could, what could make this clearer? Um, and that's a really unique part of the job. And I think that's a really, um, that's why people love originating roles too, is you get to help craft this story. You know, I mean, the, 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 the writer obviously gets the final say, but you get to influence that and you're standing in those shoes and, and the writers I've always worked with appreciate that. They appreciate the, the perspective of someone who's like standing in those shoes, staring at that other person saying the words and trying to understand the character as best they can too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's trying to make the most cohesive, interesting story they can. So, um, yeah, so I mean, again, like foundationally a lot of it's the same, but then when you're originating, you just, you don't necessarily have to stick to every single word. You can have a conversation about that if you want, you know? Yeah, which, it gives it room for growth even in the rehearsal process, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. That's my favorite part is the rehearsal. And then what show that's close to early that you've been a part of, do you, would you want to revive now? <laughs> well, I will say, well, in transit, it was so hard because we were singing a cappella, and it was just like we were changing our clothes backstage and singing and running around and dancing. And I don't think, 
I don't know if the audience fully understood that the only music they were hearing was our voices. There was no other sound. It was our, you know, our beatboxer Chesney was doing vocal percussion and then all of us were singing all the time. Anytime you heard a scene change music, that was us singing live, you know, so it was, it was so hard in that way. Um, but it was a really special group of people. We had so much fun. Um, and I think in terms, it was a little, a little slice of joy kind of show. And I think that the world, the world could use some joy. <laughs> and I feel like you don't get that, you don't get the acapella in theater that much. No, it was the first, the first Broadway musical, first Broadway acapella musical. So that was cool. Yeah, that's special. We need, we need it. And I need to see it because I've heard like one of my friends was obsessed with it and is like, it was so good. I saw it so many times and I was like, oh, I'm jealous. That's sweet. And then, uh, so what, uh, since you've been in the entertainment industry since childhood, do you have any audition tips for people who are, who are wanting to be an actor or actress, like any way to keep your nerves down before auditions? It's a good question. Um, auditions make me nervous. They still make me nervous. It's a very um, kind of bizarre situation. You know, like when else in your life are you, like job interviews I think are often nerve wracking, you know, regardless of the job. Mm -hmm. But um, specifically for our job, it's a very like singing in front of people, playing characters in front of people, revealing parts of yourself to people in an audition is very vulnerable, you know? And so I think one, it's okay, it's okay to have that be nerve wracking for you, that that's not weird, <laughs> that that's normal. Um, I do think also though that it's important to realize that the people in the room want the best for you, I think, um, at least, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, they want you to be able to get in there and do your best work. They want that for you because they want to find the person they want to hire. Um, and so, so I think that's a good thing to remember too, is that they're not like the judges sitting in front of you, marking one out of 10, you know, like they, they want you to do your best work. Um, so I think that's also, that helps me sometimes too, to, to, to see them as friends and collaborators as opposed to bosses or judges. Um, so kind of flipping that mentality. Yeah, and then kind of going along with that, because I'm sure you have to have a lot of self-confidence for auditioning. So yeah. how do you work on self-confidence in this industry when you're like told no with so many times? And <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you're told no a lot. Um, and so I think a lot of times for me with auditions, my goal is not necessarily to get the job because I don't have a lot of control over that. I could be too tall. I could have the wrong hair color. I could sound, they don't like the tone of my voice, like whatever. There's so many things that are outside of my control that I will never be able to change, you know? Um, so I think for me, a lot of times the goal is, and what helps me feel good after auditions is that I am prepared, that I feel like I know what I want to do, what I want to do with this character, what I, what my take on it is. And, um, you know, go back to the, the good Sondheim quote, anything you do, let it come from you, then it will be new. So you might think, oh, I'm not coming up with anything amazing for this. And it's like, no, you saying those words with your life experience and your perspective on things, that is going to be new. That's going to be unlike anybody else. So really own that. And um, I think that helps me when I'm going into an audition to not have it be necessarily that I want to get the job because I don't have a lot of control over that, but I can choose to present the work as I see it and how I think would be interesting. And so if they don't like it, then I have a lot, um, that's, that's not as hard for me to take, you know, if, if I know that I presented it like I wanted to. 
Um, so if I hear no, then it's like, okay, we didn't see that character the same. And it's not like I'm untalented, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I think that's, a, that's one, one way that you can kind of take some power and, and feel empowered in auditions. And it's like, if you don't get something at that time, then maybe something else is meant for you too. Absolutely. I mean, yes, the amount of shows that I had to not get to get the ones I did that yeah. would have conflicted, that would have just not, you know, worked out. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, you, you truly never know what's going to come around your way. And that's a really exciting and challenging thing about this business is that, you know, six days later, you get a call from Wicked and six days later, you're going to San Francisco. Like you just don't always know where you're going to go. Um, and it's really exciting. And it's also really crazy sometimes. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy how things work out. Like things are meant to be. Mm -hmm. and then, do you have a dream role in theater currently? Oh, oh my gosh. I always get this question and I feel like I never have like the answer at the tip of my tongue. <laughs> um, I, I love like, I love old timey musicals, you know, I love Rodgers and Hammerstein, I love classic musicals, I love Sondheim. Um, I've gotten to play so many of the roles that have been on my list and I'm like, so, like I got to do Dot in Sunday in the Park, I've gotten to do Nelly in South Pacific a bunch of times. Um, and those are still on my list, like I want to do them again, because they're so good. Um, I would like a chance to try Maria in Sound of Music. I haven't okay. done that one. I would love that. Uh, Eliza and My Fair Lady, haven't done that one. Um, so definitely some of those like classic bucket list roles. I've, I've still got, I've still got some I want to check off. So Ooh. let's get the theater back. <laughs> yes. Can you do, not to be too demanding, but can you do My Fair Lady in LA? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you just tell, find the theater, tell them <laughs> this is what's up, and then we do it. <laughs> not, not, yeah, not to be too demanding, but I really need that to happen. <laughs> and then, I mean, what's the first thing you're going to do once quarantine ends and once, like, this time period ends and we can go out and, like, enjoy theater again and enjoy the entertainment world? Oh, my gosh. I'm going to see everything I can and support every theater that I love, um, and that's in New York, on Broadway, and all over the country. There are so many incredible theaters all over the country, and they are, they're struggling. This is hard. This is not, not every theater is going to be able to make it through this, and so we, we need to support them. We need to support them um, financially. <laughs> we need to support them on, you know, with just telling people how important art and theater and music and storytelling is. Um, so that's one thing I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be like going to shows right and left and, and, and seeing everything I can. And then I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing. I miss singing. You know, I, I mean, I sing here by myself yeah. some, but you know, singing is kind of a no, no in a lot of circumstances. There are some circumstances we can safely do it, but you know, overall, it's not, it's not an easy thing to do right now. So um, I'm going to sing and I'm going to sing with other people. I'm going to sing face to face, looking at each other when we, when it's safe um, and we're, we can spit on each other again. Um, and I'm really excited about that. Yes. And I'm sure theater is going to be like a little different once it comes back. And I mean, we've had a lot of virtual theater since mm -hmm. the whole shutdown thing began. Do you think virtual theater will stick around once this, once live theater is able to come back? I don't know. You know, I mean, I do think um, there is something so special about live theater. And yes. while we are making do with what we can right now, we are doing the best we can um, with these circumstances to keep theater alive and keep theater part of people's lives. But um, you cannot replace sitting in a theater with a bunch of people with actors right in front of you saying the words and like we said spontaneity and things changing and all of that so I mean I think people are going to be craving that experience I know I am and I know theater lovers and people who value art are just like craving to get back into like to see symphonies play to see ballets to see you know all of these things not just theater um 
So I do think that people are going to want it in that format again, because we haven't had it for so long. I think um, in terms of virtual, uh, there, there have been really cool things and I hope they continue. I mean, I did one, the, um, I did a PBS broadcast of Sweeney Todd um, with the New York Philharmonic and that was broadcast, uh, like I said, on PBS 2014, 2000, I think. And, um, and that's really cool, you know, and in that live performance was created with the intention of it being filmed. So it was very much created for both venue, for like both formats. It was supposed to be on TV and live. Um, and Lonnie Price, our director, like directed it so that it happened that way, you know, so that it was, it was um, successful in both formats. So um, I think that's really cool. And I do hope that happens. I, I think, you know, growing up in California, I didn't get to New York all that often to see shows. Yeah. Um, so seeing stuff on PBS or on, you know, on TV or whatever was like really special and really cool. And I think that has been and should continue to be part of things. But again, it does require like people being together in a space. <laughs> sometimes singing, definitely talking in each other's faces. So, you know, that, I don't know when that's gonna happen, but. Speaking of, the, speaking of different mediums real quick, I have to ask, since Wicked Movie has been talked about for a while, has being Glinda on the screen, like, has that been something that you're like, oh, maybe I would wanna do that, or? <laughs> um, honestly, I don't think I've even considered it because, I'm pretty sure, I, I feel like it's probably going to be someone a little more famous than me, <laughs> but um, I mean, I, I think a Wicked movie would be super cool. I'd do it. I wouldn't say no. <laughs> I mean, I know that people, I know that br the Broadway fans want people who have actually done it on Broadway to be in it. So. Yeah, I mean, listen, yes, we all, we all know that character very, very well already, yeah. you know, she's in our bones. Um, so I, I wouldn't say no to it, but I, I don't know. <laughs> hey, it, I mean, I hope it gets made sometime in the next, like, five years, because... Yeah, I think oh yeah, totally. But yeah, uh, so anyways, uh, you mentioned the virtual theater thing. Uh, have you been working on anything during quarantine, whether it's, like, in a virtual setting, theater related, or anything not theater related that you'd want to promote? You know, I, I have worked on and off on certain things. I, um, I haven't, I've been giving myself a little bit of a break of um, taking this time to focus on other parts of my life and to, um, you know, just allow myself to see what else I love out when, when that, part of my life that I love so much, I can't participate in, in the same way. Um, but I've definitely been like throwing around ideas of, you know, I think a, a, I've thrown around ideas for so many years of trying to put together a, a solo show or a CD or things like that. And I'm still thinking about that. And that might be something that would be a good opportunity during this time for me to be artistic and also um, to contribute to the art world, you know. Um, but again, I've been kind of taking it slow and sort of allowing myself to, um, to step away a little bit. And also like, you know, this has been a really hard time for, for actors, not just actors, gosh, <laughs> for an entire industry, <laughs> um, of people. And it is, um, it's not an easy time. And sometimes that can, I think that can breed really interesting art and interesting things in people's lives and it's also hard and sad a lot of times and we all need to be able to feel that too you know we need to be able to feel the loss too of what we love because when we go back to it it's gonna be like oh yes you know and that goes across the board for all of our the designers directors choreographers technicians I mean crew let everybody is just missing our family so much um and I think you know you don't want to get bogged down by that and you don't want to like become consumed by that but that's an okay feeling too and I think I've been feeling some of that 
Yeah, and I think I think that's perfectly okay to admit it. I think, <laughs> I think that's amazing to admit, actually, and I think it's amazing to like have that opportunity to also do things that you like self care and like take. Yeah, care of totally. So, yeah, you know, and and you know, we just talked about how I didn't um I didn't get to finish college because uh, I started working, and so I've been going I've been going back to school. Um, I have been going back to school part time since 2012 on and off, but it's been off mainly for the past like six years because I've just been too busy. So yeah. this has been a really cool opportunity with remote learning for me to be able to work towards my degree again, which I'm, I just like learning, you know, I like learning and I, um, I like taking class and, and it's a goal of mine to to get my, my degree. So, so that's been like a special thing during this time that it's like, okay, I can invest like some real time in this. And I don't, you know, I, I don't have the conflict of the, you know, the intensity of theater work. I love that. It was, it was, it was like a pause in the universe. So you could, so you could finish. Yeah, I know. I still feel like I'm like, oh gosh, I have so many classes still, but I'll get there. Yes, you will. And it'll, It'll be great. And then we'll all celebrate when you get the degree. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <Yay. laughs> for you. And then uh, to, find, to find out what you're up to and what you'll be up to in the future, where can people follow you on social media? Oh, I'm not so great with the social media, but I am on Instagram and I use it mainly to talk about my dog, but I also... So, I, I also talk about work sometimes, <laughs> um, but it's usually my dog, so be prepared for that. Um, so Instagram, I'm at Erin Mackie Nash, um, and that's kind of it. That's all I, I don't have a Twitter. I don't even know what the other things are. I feel like a grandma. Um, really, Instagram's the only social media I really participate in. <laughs> I love that, and we all need dog pictures, so like, don't be afraid to post as many dog pictures as you Oh, can. well, if you'd like to see them, there's a ton. It's like literally all it is right now. But yes, Love he's very cute. Love it. Well, <laughs> thank you for talking with me on this. Yeah, totally. Becca, thank you for having me. This is really nice. Of course. Thanks for watching this episode of Backstage with Becca B. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Becca B Talks TV. Or for more exclusive content from this interview and more, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Backstage with Becca B. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video, or if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, go ahead and give me a five-star rating. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!